Hi, I'm Paul Seal from codeshare.co.uk and today I'm going to talk to you about this uh, bug tracking software called Raygun. If you go to raygun.com you'll see what it is. So you've got crash reporting so you can see all of your major errors that you get on your site. You've got real user monitoring and this is one of the best bits for me. So you can uh, measure the end user performance so you can actually even tie it to a logged in user and see any errors that they're having which is really good. Um, you can track the sessions of users so you can see what pages they go to and what experience they've had on those pages, how slow it was and things like that and you can also track deployments as well. So let's have a look if we sign in and go to the dashboard. So when you when you do sign in to Raygun you get this dashboard and um, what we can see here the last 24 hours so I've got it set up for my website codeshare.co.uk and then the last 24 hours, we can see I've had 381 sessions. And of those sessions, we can see that there are 54 errors within, the, um, within this 24 hours. So we can see there were 17 yesterday evening. And so that's just the dashboard at the top. So we've got recent requests here. So we've got total users, 302 new users. So some of these things is similar to... Um, Google Analytics but what you also get is like this user satisfaction so unfortunately it says poor so I'm a bit embarrassed to show you that but anyway and crash free users is 96% so that's the dashboard that you get you can also go into crash reporting so the good thing about Raygun is that it um, it groups your errors and it um, remembers what you think about these errors to so say if you're not bothered about that error you can ignore it um, it doesn't tell you about every single error that you're getting it, um, it like waits a while and it might say, oh, this error has reoccurred and you said you'd fixed it. Or um, this error is happening more now in the last five minutes. It's still going on and things like that. So one of the other good things about it is not only does it do like server side errors. So maybe an exception has been thrown that's been unhandled in your code. But also if you've got any errors on the client side, you can actually uh, send those errors to uh, Raygun as well. So it can track these, these script errors, the client-side errors, which is really good. And I think most of my errors are that sort of thing. So like this JSON pass and what have you. So I don't worry too much about it, um, about these errors. As you can see, I've got quite a lot in here, but it's good because I've been building up a back catalogue of errors. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can see um, like the number of errors that I've had on these days and it's been slowly dying down over the last few days. My traffic's not gone down, but the number of errors is going down. Um, so if we have a look at, I'm not going to, well, we can look at the settings, but hopefully I won't give any IDs away. Uh, so if you want to, you can do bulk actions here to remove a load of errors and you can delete all. So that's good, you've got bulk operations. Inbound filters, I've not really used any of this. Um, so you can discard requests from these IP addresses and things like that. Reporting, I've not had to do any reporting from it, um, so I can't really say too much about the reports. But the, there's the ability to create reports and you can export your errors as well if you want to. You can export all of those. So then this is the one that I really like, and that is the real-time monitoring. So right now, there are seven sessions happening on my website. So and we can see that they are around Europe, North Africa, and the one in India there. And what you can do is you can see these sessions here. So we can see this India session. So let's have a look and see. So they're on this um, website which I've got, which is a, just a blog post about SHA-512 examples in C-sharp. So it's a bit boring, but this is my most popular um, website. Uh, this is my most po popular blog post from Google, if you know what I mean. So lots of people go on that web page, and I never really know why. So if we go onto this here, if I click on this user, we'll be able to see the session history that they've had, which is really good. So I've just clicked on that. Wait for this to load up here. So they've got a session. So we can see the user experience is poor. They've had one session. Average load time was eight seconds, so that's probably why. 
They've stayed on for 31 minutes, 59 seconds, and they've been on that page for all that time. So that's interesting. So maybe they've just left it open in the browser. So I can see that individual session. So I can see the loading time and the viewing time. Uh, see what page you're on. But look at this. You can see that they're on desktop, Windows 8.1, Chrome. So you can imagine if they had an error, because under here it would show errors on this as well. Um, if they had an error, you've got the exact detail of how to replicate that sort of error. You know what page they were on, you know what the browser information is as well. So if we go back to sessions, let's have a look for some sessions where they've been on more than one page. So let's just go through. So that one in Romania, they've had three uh, page views. So let's click on this user. And then we'll click on the session when it shows up. So they've had five sessions. All oh, right, so it's recognized them from previous times as well. So that's good. So on this session, they had three page views. So they started out on the home page. They then went to the blog page. And from the blog page, they found this blog post that I did about when I hacked Troy Hunt's website to delete my data. So it just shows you that, that they went on there to there to there. So that's good. I mean, you can get some sort of user flow information from Google Analytics, but this is a lot more detail. And again, I know where they are, um, whether what device information they've got as well. I know the average load time. I know that there weren't any errors on this session that they had. And if I go back, I should be able to see... Um, See, that was slow then, but on previous times, it's been quicker. So when they've been on the site before, they did four sessions. Uh, they did four page views. So this is obviously a returning visitor. Before, they were looking at member login and logout um, form in Umbraco. Then they went back to the home page. Then they've seen one of my most popular posts on the home page, gone to that, and then another one there. So this is good information to learn about how my users are um, using the site. So if we go on to... Uh, live let's just have a look so that was the map that's who's on there now performance we can see some information about oh so at the moment the load speed is really slow and it can tell you about the speed of individual pages as well yeah so it's, it's really good and what else can we see so we've seen sessions we've seen we've basically seen users uh, so user traffic. So we've got yeah new users and returning users on these days. And then browsers, so I can find out what you know what people are visiting my my, my site with. So mostly it's all about Chrome here. Chrome, then Firefox, then Edge, and so really, if I want to, I can think about this sort of thing. I just do what I want to target, what do I want to support. So yeah, it's even got the versions. So most people are on Chrome 62 and Firefox 57, and then it goes down, obviously. Platforms, so we're talking Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. So there's a lot of information all from just having a bit of script on my website. So a bit like you do with the Google Analytics script. Um, and it, it's just set up to fire information about your users and also um, it, that bit of script that you add on there fires the information about any console errors that you have as well if you have that enabled. Uh, Geo, let's have a look at the locations. So, all right, so this is the countries versus load time. So red means slow, green means fast. I've got no greens. <laughs> so it's a bit faster in Denmark. Um, is that Denmark? Yep. Is it? I don't think that's Denmark. I think Denmark's over here. That's Denmark. Why is that saying Denmark? Anyway, that's not Denmark. Didn't think it was. Is that Greenland? Um, and they're the fastest places that it loads for some reason. What else can we do? Insights. Not really sure how to use the insights, but let's see what it says. It's a powerful feature. It analyzes your web pages for performance issues that you're right. So I've not taken advantage of that yet, but it's good that you can. 
Uh, we've got settings, so we can include anonymous users and things like that. I don't want to go too low because I don't want to give you any of my details, but there's a getting started section as well. So, oh, all right, so it's a bit of a tour. That's good then. So you, when, when you've got your free trial, because I think there's a, let's just have a look. Try it for free. Yeah, 14 day free trial, no credit card required. So you can get that set up really easily. And all it is, it's a config setting. You have a config section, config setting. I think you can even add it using NuGet Package Manager as well. So it's really easy to set up. And you just have a little bit on the client side as well. Uh, so I'll end that tour because I don't really want to do the tour. What else have we got? Users. So I don't track my users because no one really logs in to view my website. But if I wanted to, you can set it up to actually capture the user ID with the errors, which is really good. Deployments as well. I don't really use this, but you can set it up so that if you do a bad deployment, it can pick up on that and it can let you know that this deployment is causing errors, which is good. So... I've skipped application settings because I would have given you my uh, API key and things like that. Um, you can integrate with all sorts of things like um, Slack. I've enabled mine with Slack, so when I get an error or some serious errors or whatever I want to set it up for, it can, um, it can ping me on Slack and let me know there's an error occurred. And then I can choose to ignore this error, react to the error, and things like that. So that's really good. But it's got so many integrations, so you can set it up with all different ones over here. Um, yeah, so you've got the usual ones like Trello, GitHub, HipChat, Jira. So yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I'm really pleased with it. So as you can see, anyway, I've got the error tracking. So I've got the crash reporting and the real user monitoring. So yeah, if you like the look of it, have a play. You've got a free trial anyway to see if you do or don't like it. See what the benefits are compared to other bug tracking software out there. So um, I will be doing a blog post to show you how to get it set up on your website if you, from a .NET perspective. So if you look out for that web uh, blog post in codeshare.co.uk, that should be coming up in the next week or so. So I hope you liked the video. If you do, please click on like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to comment and share, things like that. And uh, I look forward to making some more videos for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.